Uh, thank you, last Kian Korla. Minister, we've discussed the issue of electric scooters in this House a number of times before. Since then, a few things have changed. In this area, in the Dublin 2, Dublin 1 area, uh, on Garda Síochána have started impounding these vehicles, detaining these vehicles, taking these vehicles away. Um, in recent times, the RSA, the Road Safety Authority, have felt the need to update their website in relation to these vehicles, to update their advice. Uh, the website was not clear. Perhaps this reflects the lack of clarity in the law. Um, one year ago, I raised this issue uh, in a parliamentary question as a member of the Oireachtas Transport Committee with you. I forewarned of this issue. At the time, the Minister said it was not envisaged that the position with regard to the need for regulation or legislation of these vehicles would change in the immediate future. Does the Minister now accept that this position has changed? that there is a need to clarify in law and in regulation the issue of these vehicles. In the last hour, I note that the Fianna Fáil party have belatedly agreed with this position and are launching a piece of legislation on the plinth at 2.30 tomorrow. And this is to be welcomed. Further focus on this issue is to be welcomed. I wish we had been foresighted in relation to the problems that have so predictably arisen in relation to this new technology. But we must now, nevertheless, legislate for it in hindsight. So Fianna Fáil's move in that instance is welcome. Last week, I met with a number of institutions and a number of companies who are interested in this area, many of whom are setting up in this country, many of whom are starting in this country. I met with a number of companies on the DCU Alpha campus in Glasnevin, world leaders in creating the technology uh, in this space. Very impressive stuff. Ireland could become a leader in this space, Minister, but in order to become a leader in this space, we need to have the foresight to allow this space to grow and this space to develop. Indeed, in the absence of law, Minister, there are now far in excess of 2,000 users of these vehicles in the city. And lest we forget, Minister, these vehicles are used in many European cities. These vehicles are many of the things this government espouses, many of the things this government aspires to be. Many of the things your department aspires to be, they're green, they're environmental, they reduce congestion, they increase the onus on cycle lane investment, they are used in many European cities and they are effective in many European cities. I'm at a loss as to why the department has been stonewalling this issue for so long. I'm at a loss as to why it has been handed to the Road Safety Authority one full year after I first raised this in the House, and I'm at a loss as to why we weren't proactive and instead were reactive in relation to this issue. In my most recent of many parliamentary questions to the Minister, he cited a number of international experiences that were negative. Uh, many of these international experiences aren't correct. Uh, many of them are erroneous, what was put to me on the record in the parliamentary question. There are many positive international experiences, many learnings uh, that, can be, that, can be, that can be brought to bear in relation to the first wave of these vehicles, which took place some years ago. We can now do things with technology that we couldn't do three or four years ago in order to safeguard uh, pedestrians, uh, safeguard other road users, and allow for the effective, safe usage of these vehicles. So I was surprised and alarmed by the Conservative approach being taken in the most recent parliamentary question answer. I'd welcome uh, the Minister to clarify his remarks, and I'd welcome some clarity in relation to the overall issue. Uh, is the Road Safety Authority report available? Uh, do we know when it will be available? Uh, and what is the Minister's position on this issue? Mr. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ken Cole, and I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Rock for raising this issue again. Um, the issue of electric scooters and for providing us with the opportunity to discuss these here. I am, of course, aware of the increasing number of e-scooters, electrically powered skateboards and similar small vehicles, both on our footpaths and on our roads. I will start by advising you of the current legal situation in relation to such vehicles, and it's very important that we get such clarity on this before we go any further or make any statements about it. The Road Traffic Act 1961 defines a mechanically propelled vehicle as a vehicle intended or adapted for propulsion 
by mechanical means, including a bicycle or tricycle, with an attachment for propelling it by mechanical power, whether or not the attachment is being used. It also includes a vehicle, the means of propulsion of which is electrical, or partly electrical, and partly mechanical. E-scooters and powered skateboards fall into this category and are therefore considered to be mechanically propelled vehicles. Any users of such vehicles in a public place, as defined in the Road Traffic Act 1961, must have insurance, road tax and a driving licence with penalties under road traffic laws, including fixed charge notices, penalty points, fines and possible seizure of the vehicle for not being in compliance with these requirements. As it's currently not possible to tax or insure e-scooters or electric skateboards, they're not considered suitable for use in a public place. As the deputy knows, I have requested the Road Safety Authority to research how e-scooters and other such vehicles are regulated in other countries, particularly other member states. I'm very keen to understand the road safety implications of the use of such vehicles on public roads, especially when interacting with other vehicles. Road safety is paramount. I'm due to receive the outcome of the authorities' research within the next few, few weeks, and until I've received it, I will not be making a decision on what actions, if any, to take. I will need to be persuaded that permitting such vehicles on our roads will not give rise to safety concerns, both for the users themselves and for all other road users, including cyclists, pedestrians and motorists. In this context, I would expect the RSA, the Road Safety Authority, to include in their consideration whether there is a potential inability of the scooterist to obey some basic rules of the road, difficulties with lighting e-scooters so that they are easily visible to other road users, the absence of suspension or shock absorption which places the scooterist in danger on an uneven road surface, and insurance issues in the event of a collision. The Deputy should further note that should I decide that the benefits derived from the use of e-scooters outweigh the risks associated with using this type of transport, an amendment to primary legislation will be required. Thank you, Laskian uh, Corla, and thank you, Minister. Minister, the genesis of this issue and the genesis of perhaps the perspectives from which, the different perspectives from which we're coming at it, are the definition of a mechanically propelled vehicle in law, Minister. There is an ambiguity there, Minister. For instance, in your answer, um, you talk about uh, a vehicle being powered by mechanical means. But you need to clarify your answer in that regard, Minister, uh, because the question begs, did you mean a vehicle which can solely be powered by mechanical means? You left out that crucial word, solely, and in doing so, effectively would have dragged e-bicycles, for instance, into this grey area along with electric scooters via the vagueness of that answer, and you gave a very similar answer in a parliamentary question before. Indeed, as anyone who uses an electric scooter knows, or as anyone who's watched the RT primetime report on electric scooters knows, it is impossible, absolutely impossible, to achieve 100% of any journey on an electric scooter without manually intervening. You need a manual intervention to start up these vehicles. You need to reach five kilometres per hour via manual propulsion in order to start these vehicles. Then an electric motor kicks in. Then you continue your journey from there. Therefore, not 100% of the journey is mechanically propelled. Accordingly, it is commensurate under the current law with electric bicycles. There is no threshold for which a mechanically propelled vehicle can be defined in law currently. This is the vagueness of the law. This is what needs urgent clarification. This incomplete understanding of the various state agencies is exactly why there is this ambiguity here right now. And that's precisely what will end up being challenged in court. And that is precisely what needs to be clarified in law urgently. Thank you, Minister. Minister two minutes to conclude. Yeah, I, <coughs> The Deputy is asking me to take a position on this before the RSA reports. I'm not going to do that, Deputy. It would be absurd to do so, to have people who have made a detailed study of what happens here and what's happening abroad, and for me to, um, for me to make a decision in advance of that. I, ha I may have a disposition, but I have an agency who is with some authority and with some interest in safety, which I notice is fairly... Uh, 
absent from your representations here. Safety is paramount. I said that. It is the most important thing for, that, that the passengers, that, that, that the travellers should be safe, that people in other vehicles should be safe. And that is the most important element of these particular e-scooters which you're seeking to have introduced. It is very important to me that if they're introduced that the Road Safety Authority gives a judgment on whether these are safe for people who are affected by them. And I'm not just talking about those who are on them. That is very important. And Deputy, it's very important also that you don't make statements without backing them up. You say that there were events which have been quoted uh, of incidents overseas which didn't happen. You said they were erroneous. Let's get the detail on that. I've quoted facts and figures about what, what's happened in other European cities to you. Uh, they're well known. And those details, as far as I know, are open to correction but haven't been corrected. If, if they should be corrected, let's, let's have them corrected. Also, Deputy, you say, without any basis whatsoever, you say they will, to, to, to allow them will reduce congestion. The evidence is, as far as I know, the opposite of that. That those who are, who, are, who are proposing to use and are using these particular e-scooters are actually, are actually coming out of, are coming, are swapping out of, out of buses, buses and other means of public transport. They're probably and possibly taking up space. So let's not have some sort of unbacked up, unsupported evidence coming here. My position is open. I'm prepared to take authoritative advice, not populist advice from you, Deputy. Thank you. Oh my God. Um.